three, two, one. Welcome to the Fourth Line Podcast, part of Full Press Radio. This is March the 15th, 2021. With you today is myself, Carl, and Stevie Nick. We were coming at you an hour earlier this week. An hour later? I think, well, it's the same time in most of the world. (laughs) It's just our stupid country that changes it. Does, I was thinking about this today. Does Europe do time change? I don't think so. European listeners, can you let us know? <laughs> There's a lot of them. Do there? <laughs> you laugh, Nick. I would say Europe is our second biggest continent for listeners. Um, okay, I, would, they, I have an answer. Okay, they do. However, the EU voted to abolish the practice of daylight savings time in 2021. Interesting. So I'm curious then if, so this was their first year without time change then? Supposedly. Okay. Well, I am curious because well, does that mean then what's England doing? Because they left or they are leaving? No, they're out now. They're fully out. Yeah. Okay. So did England still do time change? We don't know. Uh, We don't know. They're outside of the EU. You know what we should do, Carl? We should start a podcast on European politics, just the two of us. I don't, yeah, I don't see why not. (laughs) What could go wrong? Yeah, nothing. I woke up this morning to, uh, I saw someone tweeting about something from European politics and I was, it seemed like a big deal. And so I opened Reddit to see what it was. And it was not a big enough deal to make the front page of Reddit. So I assume that I assume that it wasn't, but like folks are fired up about it or one folk, a person was fired up about it. And uh, either way, I think that would be thrilling content for all of our European listeners. Yeah, I I agree. Reddit is also like 80% of its user base is Americans. Yeah, that's probably why. I figured that if it was a big enough deal, it would have made the front page. Apparently not. Well, speaking of Americans and front pages of news, I'm trying to segue to the ESPN thing. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Sports News Network, ESPN, mm-hmm. struck a huge new deal with the NHL last week. Big, big news uh, for all of you who have been watching the nhl on cable in the united states no i and i guess not even that but i was gonna say no longer with nbc but that's still to be determined as well there might still be some games on nbc a minor deal but the espn struck a massive deal to have the nhl return to their their network more than doubling the nhl's tv revenue from their current deal pretty crazy and this is just for 50 percent of it yeah but the biggest part that is going to be a changers because ESPN has their big ESPN plus package. And I know uh, in Canada, we don't have access to that, but that's part of, if you have Disney plus in the States, you also get that. And so it's just them continuing to bolster their giant collection of streaming services, uh, which is great for those that don't want to just pay the NHL for their streaming service. You can now just pay Disney. Yeah, just pay more money to Disney. This is, is this great for hockey, though, for the NHL. It's, I think so, yeah. It's great for ESPN, too. Like, it's just good for hockey coverage in the U.S. I think, yeah, it's going to be fantastic. I, I, I'm not sure. Well, I know that less people have ESPN than just strictly NBC. So from that angle, there's less coverage, but way more. I believe they said there's going to be a thousand, over a thousand games on ESPN plus for the people to be able to stream, which seems like most of them. Yeah. You would think so. Yeah. It does seem like most of them. But especially if, uh, I mean, depending on what happens with these division alignments next year and what we get, if I know some of the Canadian teams have really been pushing to keep a Canadian division, um, if we keep the Canadian division, obviously they, they should be playing outside of it, but uh, you're going to have way more all American matchups 
than normal. And I think that's just going to give more opportunities for ESPN to really start to hone in and, and get some of those, those avenues going. So can we, can we go on a tangent here for a second? Cause I totally forgot. They talked about this on, on headlines on hockey night in Canada, Saturday night, the possibility of continuing the all Canadian division into next year. Apparently some teams think this is going to be like a home run once you can get fans in the stands. Yeah. And that, and they're, they're wanting, I mean, I know, and I'm sure it's the same way in Toronto. I know here in Calgary, the most expensive tickets are when a Canadian team shows up. Yeah. I I don't disagree with them. I think it would be, I think fans would go bonkers if the Canadian division continued and you were able to go to games and see it live. Like, I think the energy would be insane when it's because what you'd probably be playing six times, three and three, probably against each team. Yeah. That sounds great. I just don't know if I like it long-term. I kind of want them to mix the divisions again. If they were only playing against Canadian teams, I'd have a big issue with it, right? I'm already, I, I thought it would be great at the start of the year, like these little mini series. And I do still like that, but I'm already sick of seeing the same teams over and over and over again, playing each other. It's too much. It's too much. And the fact that you're going to go to the Stanley, you could go to the Stanley cup finals, having played only, what did we say? Eight or nine teams. Which, if a North, if a North team makes the Stanley cup finals, They'll play the other six teams in their division and two others. Yeah, it's that's crazy. They got it. So, yes, I'm with you. And maybe that's the compromise. Maybe that's what makes me feel good about it is keep the Canadian division. But you got to start interdivision play throughout the season again. You have to. And it'll be sp- it'll be spread out. But I, I think if you have and this should be or could be even the model across the league, because we're in a spot where the NHL needs to be looking at finding, this has become a very big tangent. I I, both money related though, right? The NHL is at a big spot where they need to be cutting costs in certain ways. And I think if you're playing a team, you know, six times in your division, you go to them and you play a three game series, you play what Monday, I guess you play what Friday, Saturday, Monday, maybe you work it out like that. You've now played half the team games against that team. Travel costs are cut. Hotel costs are cut because you're not moving around a bunch. You can get uh, get that taken care of. And I think playing them like that is going to be good because then it also seems like you don't play them as often because you really only play them twice a year. But you got to get those out of the way and cuts down on the cost. I do enjoy the series aspect of this year. It's just too much of the same thing. Yeah, I agree. Anyways, none of that has to do with ESPN. No, but a, a big deal uh, for the American broadcasting rights. And even though the NHL is getting, what is it, 200 million extra above what they currently are getting from NBC. And that's without any extra deals because it's not an exclusive deal for ESPN. Yeah, There is a potential for NBC to still get in on this as well. Um, but huge revenue increase and still the NHL and Gary Bettman are already saying not going to be enough. We have so much escrow to claw back from these players that this extra $200 million is all for the owners. The salary cap will remain flat. That's wild, man. But it says a lot about the state of the sport in the U S and, you know, I think, I don't have, I haven't seen any reports on this, but it, you know, what I'm seeing from the outside is that popularity is growing. Um, demand is growing because you've got these big broadcasters paying more and more, you know, bigger dollars to, to have the rights to the games. Yeah, I do. I do agree in that regard that it is growing. I am, am still shocked when I look south of the border and I see TV numbers for like, various sporting events it is wild to me how few viewers the nhl pull sometimes even compared to canada like like 
like, uh, look, I have my notes from our first show from the start of the season this year. 6.6 million viewers in Canada on opening night, 972,000 in the US. Which is, so that is opening night. That was multiple games in multiple markets at various times. They pulled 972. Yeah. The second tier of NASCAR, so not like the big guys that are on the day 2500, the second tier, their first race of the season pulled in a two hour time slot over a million people. And so you compare those two and you wonder why, where the NHL is and why they feel like a, a smaller target and a smaller demographic because it significantly is. Yeah. Yeah. And we're so close to it. It seems so big to us all the time, but when you pull out and look at the bigger picture, a lot of people don't, don't watch hockey. And even, I mean, fans, you could be a fan of hockey, but it is very much a niche market yeah. when you, when you get down to it. Yeah. And for sure. And I think this will help, right? Getting more it in more unique places, being able to get eyes on it, being able to have some of those places. And ESPN is is knowing what they're doing, right? They've been running this ESPN Plus now for a few years. So being able to get that on a streaming service into more homes uh, easier, right? And having the, that kind of more frequent rights for it, I think it's only going to help. Yeah. It's it's much better. Now, is ESPN the broadcaster that did the streaky puck back in the day, the highlighted puck? No, I, I want to say Fox was the one that the was ones Fox. behind that. Okay. Darn. No, they were the ones, I mean, I'm, I'm sure you saw this past week, the ESPN, NHL on ESPN theme music. Yes. It, it was a banger. We can only hope that that comes back. It was a banger. I think they said they're going to bring it back. Yeah. So, and... The broadcast, I again, we are a little separated from it up here. Yeah. Um, but being able to bring some of those broadcasters back, I know people are excited to see Gary Thorne possibly making a return, so it should be fun. It'll be good, and I'm excited to see what comes of it. Me too. What's next? Well, one more spin off of that. Oh, with, with ESPN being the I would say main broadcaster in the United States, does that mean? that the Anaheim Mighty Ducks can finally triumphantly and properly return to the Mighty Ducks of Anaheim. Because of Disney? Disney's back in the NHL world. Oh, Carl, I never put two and two together. That would be amazing. They've got the TV series that's on Disney+. Plus. Like, we've got crossover potential. I don't see why not. Oh, it's coming back. Amazing. They're going to bring back the original jerseys from Mighty Ducks 1. Why not? Why not? Awesome. All right. Uh, Tampa Bay Lightning are back playing. I, I know that they've had a number of times. I mean, they seem like one of the teams most affected by COVID delays. Um, but they were back this week and they raised the championship banner again? For a second time. They must be the first team to ever raise their Stanley cup banner twice. I think the Nashville predators tried to ra- try to raise their division champion banner twice. Um, but the league stepped in and wouldn't let them do it. So <laughs> why <laughs> they're proud of themselves. Just they're a real different proud. set of fans. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they, I mean, that has to be absolutely. So, but Tampa's got fans back in the building and they decided that it was time. They couldn't I mean, wait any longer. It's warranted. I get it. But did they need to do it the first time? No. They absolutely did not. Like, they knew at some point fans would be back in that building. Although if you watch the video, it doesn't look like there's fans in the building. <laughs> well, that's the thing, because it's not full capacity. It's kind of funny from TV. <laughs> like, it's still, what, I, I think the most any demographic is allowing right now is uh, 50% capacity. Is, is the most fans I saw Vegas is going to be allowed 50% capacity soon. So why not? Are they going to raise it a third time when they can have a full building? No, it's up now. Come on. 
Imagine with, the poor with, guy whose job it is. He has to keep can, every time he's got to pull the rope, lower it, raise it. It's going to be you, jacked by the end of the season. I was going to say, he's either going to have carpal tunnel or have really strong forearms. Yeah, it was a nice, uh, it was a nice dramatic ceremony. I love it, the music. It was a little much, though. Let's it always is. It's way more majestic than it should be. Especially the second time. <laughs> it's like, and I, I don't even, like, I get re-raising it. Maybe, you know, but on the 50th anniversary of the Maple Leafs 1967 Stanley Cup, they could lower it and re-raise the banner. Sure, I get it. But this, it, it was what, four months ago, you just did this. We, we just saw what it, what it was like. like. The footage exists. <laughs> Someone should do the side-by-side -side of the first one and the second one. See how different <laughs> it looks. It can't look that different. It, the, it doesn't look like there's anyone in the place. It's the same building. It's the same, it's the same banner. Maybe some different music. And you know what? After seeing what they can do through the bubble playoffs last year and through the first start of the season with all the fake crowd noise in the speakers. When you listen to the crowd cheering, I'm like, fake. There's no way there's that many people in here. <laughs> yeah, it's true. I just don't, I don't trust it anymore. I, I will never trust fan noise again. That'll be a big thing when we get back of like, is it, are they pumping in fan noise again? I mean, I always kind of thought that they did at some arenas. It just seemed louder in there than than it actually was. But now 100%, I'm always going to question it. Yeah, especially like a, a Saturday afternoon Blues-Panthers game. Because you know that's when they're putting that game. <laughs> there's, no way, there's no way the fans are getting fired up for that, for that 11 o'clock start. It's so funny. It's always the same teams that have those like matinee games. The Flyers always. Yeah, fires are always in the afternoon. The Penguins seem to get that 12.30 time slot a lot. Tampa keeps getting this weird 3 o'clock on a weekday time slot. Yeah, Florida always gets those weird times too. 3, 4 o'clock, 5 o'clock. Started getting notifications today that there was a game on. I'm like, this can't. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. This can't be happening right now, but it was. Weird. Well, Very, congratulations, Tampa, again. You did it. You once. To, you did it once. And again. <laughs> I, I think when we have something we're celebrating again, we should celebrate it repeatedly. Should we I just, was, like, every, every four months just redrop the 300th episode? Well, that was... So, one thing that was noteworthy... We almost did that this year, actually. Because our 300th episode and our, like annual anniversary we're about two months apart so we almost <laughs> did a tampa we almost did like this is our fifth anniversary and also our 300th episode i guess it would have been sixth anniversary sixth anniversary and two three months episode were mere weeks apart and we could have done it but that reminds me have you checked on jamie ben lately uh no do you want to give us a jamie ben update let's do a jamie ben update it's been a while it has what number are we on right now this Nick is episode 321. Jamie Ben has scored four goals this year in 20 games. He's at 304 career goals. Three, so not, not anywhere close to catching us then. No. Which is great. I it think feels so good to be ahead of Jamie Ben. I think, I mean, I, I think that unless we I think even if we did an entire season next year of weekly shows and then called it a career next, like summer of 2022, I bet we finished with more episodes than Jamie Ben has goals. Yeah. You're we're pushing that territory. Like it's almost insurmountable already. Yeah. It's getting, it's getting pretty close. I mean, he's, 31 years old, 12 years into his NHL career. And for sure, we need to retire before Jamie Ben for it to even be a chance. So the race is on, Jamie. Better get scoring. Yeah. 
Ask for that power play time. We're not going anywhere. Take Pavelski's spot on the power play and you'll be fine. Yeah. She certainly right. can use it. He has zero power play goals. Well, I mean, it doesn't like, doesn't sound like he's got a lot of any of them to be no. fair. No. All right. All right. Have you, have you seen this, uh, this interesting trend coming out of Ottawa recently? And I, I mean, I, the trend I mean is not them losing. Cause we oh, do- then no. Well, I guess <laughs> them losing isn't really interesting anymore. No, it's not. I, we, they did beat the Leafs quite handily last. Was that last night? Yes. Last night. Uh, yeah. I don't know if it was handily, but they beat the Leafs. They held I, on. I, the Leafs played the last six minutes with an empty net. They only, the Sens only won by one, but. It Honestly, felt, like felt aggressive watching that game. What we're about to talk about, about the Sens, I feel like the label could be applied to Leafs fans as well. Interesting. I'm very curious to hear your thoughts. All right, let's get let's get into this then, because this is this could take the rest of the episode. <laughs> so if you have not seen, there is a trend among Ottawa Senators fans that actually started last season was kind of when it got started, but really came into its own this year. The sicko movement is alive and well in Ottawa. Apparently it's been going on for over a year. I had no idea, but it makes perfect sense. Can you explain to us, Carl, what is the sicko movement? So the sicko movement is, I mean, if we take the meme side of it out, even just for a second, the sicko movement is the embracing of the loss, embracing of the upset, and just really owning where they are. But this sicko fan that's happy when they lose and just loves to watch the misery of others around them. Like is the you, general you must be a sicko if you can keep cheering for this team. Exactly. So that's what that's what it is in a nutshell. But it's also been paired with this song or video that came up years ago. This came up and really was paired with Senators fans last year. And the fan base has started to embrace it. And now the organization themselves have been embracing the sicko movement. Like so much so that they have played this song in the arena as the team was leaving the ice. So much so that behind the Senator's bench, they have placed cardboard cutouts of the meme. So I'm going to read uh, just the chorus of the song. So people have an idea of, of what we're talking about here. I'm only going to read it. I'm not going to sing it. The sickest fans, the sickest team, but you can't cure our disease. Call the doctor, call the ambulance, but it's not for me. <laughs> we're the sickos. We're despicable. And that's why we scream. <laughs> fantastic it's so good i also i love the fact that there's a meme in a meme there too all the ambulance but it's not for me so good and the fact that the team is now not only caught on to this but embraced it and started working with it a bit i think it's great it's so good they like they actually needed something like that because their relationships, their relationship with their fans was getting to be pretty strained. Yes. And this is kind of a sort of olive branch of some sort to reach over across the aisle and shake their hands and say, hey, we understand where you guys are at. We're with you. I think this is the, this is now, I mean, we can critique a lot of things about the Ottawa Senators as an organization, this has to become the model for a rebuilding franchise in any sport. Like, what do you mean from a public relations perspective? Yeah. In terms of fan engagement. Yeah. I, yeah, you, you did this like, cause I think right now, I, I think, I mean, the Buffalo Sabres are probably the worst spot of any organization fan base relationship in the league. And if they were somehow embracing where they were at and getting in on the joke, it would help things so much more. The players would have less stress. Like the players, 
it's it it's fun being able to go and to see this and to be a part of that. We saw the Sens coach, DJ Smith, was literally like, ha 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 ha, yes, ha ha, in an interview before the game today. Amazing. It's great. But those two teams are in kind of different areas because the senators were not expected to win. They were not expected to be competitive. This is kind of where they were expected, you know, to land. So it's okay to laugh at yourself in that position and embrace that kind of sicko mentality. The Buffalo Sabres went out and signed Taylor Hall last year. They went and traded for Eric Stahl. They went and made these moves that were supposed to improve their team and make them a playoff contender. That's a little harder to look internally and say, and chuckle at yourself. Be like, well, we tried guys. <laughs> okay. They, I, like they should be upset with themselves. I can. Yeah, you're right. But if, if the Red Wings were to have their own version of the sicko movement, would you be on board? Yeah. Right now? Absolutely. Because that organization has come out and said, look, we're in this for, it's going to take a couple of years until we're going to start winning again. The problem with the Red Wings is they're too stuffy of an organization. They think way too highly of themselves. Right. Oh, they're we're a, so classy. They're a highbrow organization. And you've got to have some fun with things. Absolutely. Especially in times like these, because otherwise it's just doom and gloom and people don't want to watch the games. No. no. I'm all for it. I love it. Uh, good on the senators and good on their fans for really embracing this and just having some fun with it. So absolutely. That is fantastic. We are a mere, we're less than a month away. Actually, today is I'd say in most places around the world, March 15th, 2020 was like a landmark day, at least in North America. I I said the world, North America, that was like the day that most of North America took COVID seriously and shut things down and went into lockdown. And so as we get to this anniversary and and we start looking back, um, definitely been an interesting, weird, uh, and difficult year for for many people for various reasons um but it is wild to look back and see where we've come it you know watching i don't remember what day it was it was a few days ago and watching one of the games and um they kept flashing back to interviews of gary bettman talking about you know where we were a year ago and it's hard to believe that all of this started only one year ago like we had it the league stopped and we had an off season the equivalent of an off season from a time perspective longer longer than an off season longer than an off season and then we had a playoffs in a bubble which was like a flash in the pan now that you look back on it it does not feel like it was and it didn't last that long no and then we had another off season and now the seasons and now the game's been restarted in a completely different way and format. And all of this has happened in the span of a year. It's crazy. I mean, I think back to even our show last year and trying to piece together a podcast when you do not know what is on the horizon. And I mean, for some, for some foolish reason, we kept doing it. <laughs> we were like, let's just roll it out every week. We're going to be here for our listeners. And I don't, I mean, I, I called it foolish, but I don't regret it for a second. It was fun. It definitely forced us to be creative, uh, to find different angles, to talk about things and to have some fun while doing it. And I don't I know about you, but it was great every week being able to just laugh and talk and have fun. Right. I think a little bit of that normalcy, right? That we being able to have some sort of outlet. And I I think we all could use something like that then and now still, right? Like things are starting to get back more to normal as, you know, fans are allowed into buildings and we're, you know, vaccines are rolling out and all these different things, which is fantastic. Love it. But I mean, with where this league has been this year, uh, looking forward again do you expect for next year i know the nhl would love to have a season that starts beginning of october like normal and runs through the 
normal schedule that we've seen. Do you expect that that's what we'll have? Yeah. I think they're going to make a really big effort to at least from like a scheduling perspective, travel perspective to get back to normal. Uh, I think every building in some capacity in both countries will be allowing at least some fans into there, maybe not at hundred percent capacity uh, before 2022. But I think that, I think that just like the rest of the world, the NHL is going to try and move everything back to the way, maybe not the way it was, but the way it should be going forward uh, for the long term. Yeah, I think so. And I, I would not be surprised if most of the buildings, and this might be just wishful thinking, but I would think most of the buildings will be near or at full capacity by October. Yeah, at least definitely south of the border. Canada seems to be lagging um, the U.S. and some of that stuff. So wouldn't surprise me if they're not at 100% capacity, but not as low as like whatever some of the arenas are now, like 5%. Like the Red Wings let 750 people into the arena last week. Which like how how much staff does it take to facilitate right? bringing 750 people in? It almost seems like it's not worth it. Yeah. But I'm, I'm, do you have any idea? That's one thing that I haven't really seen what ticket prices are like for these arenas bringing in fans. I have no idea. I'm kind of afraid to want to look. Yeah. When it's, I mean, cause you're talking, they're all, I mean, most of them are club seats. You've got some people spread out. They're supposed to be spread out throughout the building, but it does not look like that when you check it out on TV. It doesn't look like that. No, but I wonder what the rules are. Like if you go with a friend or if you like, if you buy two tickets, I assume they're beside each other. I would assume so. so that you aren't using every other seat. You sell yeah. four here and then four there and et cetera. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't know. Ticket prices. It's a, it's a good question, but I'm kind of afraid to know. Yeah. I mean, I think when we get back, depending on, it's also tough to to try to sell a full building if you were to sell, right? Like with the way that a lot of economies are going right now, it's not an easy situation to be able to try to fill a 15, 16,000 person arena 41 times a year. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's definitely not going to be an easy year. Like, like I said, I don't think things are going to go back to the way they were. Um, but I think everyone, um, including the NHL is going to be working really hard at establishing the new normal, whatever that looks like. What do you think? <laughs> I, I, I was just thinking of like, cause you said, it's not going to go back to normal. What do you think is the most unexpected thing that we won't have anymore? Like I'm imagining, can we still have a kiss cam at a hockey game? <laughs> I don't know, man. I, I mean, if you're putting it on the two people who know each other really well. When I go to the game and I buy and I buy some snacks and the concession guy hands it to the guy at the end of the row and everyone in my row touches it on the <laughs> way down to me. And then I hand the money down and everyone touches the money. Is that going to be a thing anymore? Oh my God. So many things that seem like normal that are just so disgusting now. (laughs) What? 20 people can't touch my drink before I get it. There's going to be so many weird things. Like what about shaking hands? (laughs) Yeah. Are we gonna have to shake hands with strangers after this? I think probably. Weird. Yeah. Anyways, let's take a break. We'll be back on the other side where we are going to dive into the elimination station. Three, two, one. Guess who's back? Back again. Stan Lee's back. 
tell a friend. It's funny that sicko song. It reminded me some some guy did a parody of Eminem's uh, "Without Me" when Detroit won the Stanley Cup for the second time in 1998 or something like that. Maybe 2002. I like it. I was that guy you because I mean there's only one person that I go to for my NHL themed songs. <laughs> No, no, that guy was uh, that guy was not me. I was a little too young. However, you could say that that's where I found my inspiration for my Stevie song. I, that's true. That is good. I someone sent us a TSN. They have their like bar down, little weird thing that I never fully understand. They just steal other people's content to repost it on their own. Oh yeah, bar um, down. Yeah, yeah. So they posted someone who like sang uh one of those like shanty songs that everyone's loving these days yeah you know, someone wrote one about hockey and we i was sent it by a uh, listener and they were like nick and this guy should do a collab and i i thought nick is far better than this guy this guy planned it this guy recorded it and planned it i don't think the listeners fully appreciate or understand what it is that you do for us every single week <laughs> Well, uh, we're going to have to put together like uh, a greatest hits album one year. It'll be 100 tracks, <laughs> all of them 30 seconds long. It's just awful. It's the same melody over and over again. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but I, but great. All of them oh, fantastic. Either too way. Much fun. If you don't stick around to the end of the show, normally make sure you do today because if you like nick sings us a song that he writes on the spot every single week i think there's probably been what five of them that you've like had premeditated and like this is the song this week yeah normally i do it when you're telling everyone to go check out our facebook and twitter and stuff yeah that's when you start coming up with a rhyme not only like not only do you write a song you write a rhyming song about something that happened in the NHL this week. And it's a treat. I'm glad you enjoy it, Carl. I I think last last week's might have been the most feedback we've gotten about one of your jingles ever. I'm glad people enjoy them because it can get pretty stressful when you're halfway singing the halfway through singing the first part and you have no idea what you're gonna say next. Yeah. So thank you for the feedback, everyone. I'm glad you're all enjoying them. That also, as as the editor of the show last week, that also might have had to have been the quickest time I've had to cut from you finishing the song to what came next ever. <laughs> like, I think I cut off the end of the last word. I, I understand. <laughs> <laughs> I, I remember what came after. <laughs> Anyways, yeah. Carl. Should we, we eliminate doing? somebody? Yeah, let's do it. We've, we're here. It is time for the elimination station where we eliminate a team from the playoffs. And so far, I feel pretty okay about our track record this year. Yeah, I feel I feel good about our track record. I mean, I'm <laughs> I'm a little nervous about some of the Nick Lidstrom's we put in on the other end of the show. But uh, elimination station-wise... I think we're looking good. I don't think we're going to have to take anybody out. There's only one Nick Lidstrom team that I'm concerned about. And it was like, was it not the very first one that we did? It is the first one. Uh, Maybe second, maybe first. It's got to be second because that team didn't play the first week of the season. Oh, that's the team you're concerned about. Then that was the second one. Which team are you? You're concerned about Vegas? Philadelphia. Do we put Philly in first? I think so. I think I'm more concerned about Dallas than I am Philly. I th- I think Philly was the first one because I read that one article on The Athletic on why I should believe in the Philadelphia Flyers, and I just went all in on them way too early in the season. Yeah, that's fair. Dallas, I would be concerned about as well. But here are the teams that we have eliminated. We have out west, we've eliminated two of our four teams, the Anaheim Ducks and the Los Angeles Kings. In the Central Division, we have eliminated two of our four teams as well, eliminating the Nashville Predators and Detroit Red Wings. In the East, we've also eliminated two of our four teams, eliminating the New Jersey Devils and Buffalo Sabres. And in the North Division, we only have to eliminate three teams. We've done one, and it is those sickos in Ottawa. 
So should we catch up the North to the rest of the league? Should we do another North team? Well, so every division left has two more teams to be eliminated. So we've got eight more weeks, which, wow. Does that mean we have eight weeks left until the playoffs? That would make sense. Yeah. Wow. It's coming. It's coming fast. Trade deadline is 28 days away. Yeah. Four weeks till trade deadline. And and with that Canadian quarantine period, there may be trades done long before the trade deadline. We saw so many players hitting the waiver wire this week because teams are trying to generate cap space and move guys around. And and it's like some big name, Jake Gardner on the on waivers and clear. And they're all clearing. Everyone clear. No one has cap space to claim a guy on waivers. I guess so. Like what, how many teams have $4 million in cap space to claim Jake Gardner? None, none that he's going to (laughs) help in the playoffs. (laughs) Exactly. Right. Yeah, sure. You could go to New Jersey, Jake, but they don't want you either. So what do you, what are you feeling then? The world is our oyster. We've eliminated enough. I I don't, I'm not feeling comfortable about the North division right now. No, I don't think I could confidently eliminate one of the teams that we would have to eliminate. Hey, because what Calgary winning games with Daryl Sutter now, Montreal sitting in a playoff spot, and kind of those top three all seem pretty locked in. So it'd be like yeah. Vancouver, but I don't feel super comfortable about that right now. There's three points in the standing separating Vancouver from Montreal. Yeah, I'm not there yet. No, I'm not there either. So I, I mean, I kind of think we should go to the West. I was going to suggest there was a team in the West that I had in mind and a team in the East that I had in mind, but I feel more comfortable about this West team. I'm with you. Okay. What's the team? San Jose. Is yours? Yeah. Yours. Okay. I was like, maybe it's Arizona, but. Honestly, we could probably do either of them and it would be fine. Could you. Do we just stick in the West next week and just fully lock down that division? I think we could do that very easily and fairly. I think so. Anyways, San Jose Sharks, welcome to the Elimination Station. This is... Wait, did they make the playoffs last year? No, No. they didn't. No, they finished very low and gave their first round pick to the Ottawa Senators. Oh, yeah, that's right. That's right. So they're two years now removed from the playoffs. Yeah. And the last time they were in the playoffs, they, that was the year where they had like that disastrous penalty kill for Vegas against San Jose. That was that year. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I remember that. And then I believe that was the year that they played Colorado in the second round. I want to say that that was, that was the year. Yes, it was two years May- ago. Well, there you go. Now, I think the Sharks are going to be a little harder to solve than some of the last few teams that we've done. That's fair. I agree because I don't know where to start. Well, you can't start with their defense because you can't do anything there. No. And I I mean, they they still have some good pieces there, right? Like I look at that team, Brent Burns. Still good. Yeah. Eric Carlson, still good. Mark Edward Vlasic, less good. I mean, still good, just not $7 million good for the next six years. But none of these deals, even the Eric Carlson deal, which was just signed, none of these deals were deals that we looked at and said, like, this is going to be good as their careers draw to a close. Yeah, you're right. And I think that's because this team was banking on these current years of the deals being contending years. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Right. Their window was not supposed to have closed as fast as it did. No, but it did. And what is the reason for that? Martin Jones. Right. And you know what didn't help that? Devin Dubnik. <laughs> <laughs> that was not the competition that they needed. No. No. So 
I don't know. Like you look at their forwards. It's not awful. Did you see that very interesting scenario this week when the San Jose Sharks almost voided Evander Kane's contract? No. That would have been... So I'm, I'm sure you've seen Evander Kane going through bankruptcy yeah. difficulties. As part of it, and I've, the San Jose Sharks came out and said that they're not going to do this. But one avenue that they were looking at was that um, many of the creditors that he owes money to uh, we're using the leverage of his contract against it. Well, if the Sharks were to void his contract, then he, they would not be able to go after him for the money in bankruptcy. So then they he would not be on the hook for that. And any sort of like bankruptcy law circumcedes the agreement between the players' union and the league. And so you can fully and completely void a contract if bankruptcy is part of the reason, which is wild. So if they void that contract, they get out of it, obviously. It comes off their books yeah. and off the cap. Yeah. And Evander Kane no longer owes that money. I think he would have gotten away. I think it would have saved him about $10 million in owed money. I mean, it kind of seems like a win-win. <laughs> kind of did like i saw the scenario play out and i said i think both of them should probably do that yeah now that means getting rid of your leading scorer oh you're fully i mean you've gone full sicko at that point in time you've gone full sicko (laughs) vander kane leads this team in points with 23 11 goals 12 assists that's in 25 games though. Like that's about a point a game for Evander Kane, which is about what he was at last year and the year before. And he's a solid, consistent point a game producer. I agree. I think that's very good for him. And for $7 million, a, honestly a great price tag. Yeah. Yeah. I, I totally agree. That said, apparently he almost, uh, almost was not a shark, which would have led to a, a very different uh, elimination station this week, but uh, yeah, nonetheless, he is a shark, still is for now. And so, I mean, he's there, and even some of these other pieces up front that they like would have expected to kind of keep taking those next steps, as much as Martin Jones and the goaltending situation is not helping, the rest of that kind of core up front really stalled out. I feel I, I kind of agree. And I wonder how much of that is because of like, they lost a lot of heart and soul. I feel in their locker room by losing like Joe Pavelski and Joe Thornton. Like, I wonder how, how much glue those guys provided in keeping the team together and motivated. Well, and, and winning, winning also helps you keep motivated. Winning helps for sure. Yeah. But like you start looking down this forward core, I only get, about five or six names down before I stop recognizing names. I agree, right? Because you've got Kane, Couture, Timo Meyer, yeah. Tomas Hurdle, then like Kevin LeBlanc, and then kind of runs out. Rudolph's Balsers. Balsers. Let's play the game. Where is Rudolph Balsers from? Oh, I'm going to say Slovakia. He is Latvian. Okay. Wouldn't have guessed that. No. So I don't feel too bad about it. No. Latvian. Rudolph's Balsers. Uh, Balsurs? Balsurs, says hockey reference. His first name is plural. Yeah. Are there any other examples of that? Uh, Anders. Anders. Is that one? Mats. Mats. Yeah. Nix. There's only one of me here today, Carl. Uh, that's all that we could handle, though. I don't, this show doesn't have that's enough room true. for two of you. That's true. 
Okay, so a question about the sharks. Do you make a move or try to make a move to capitalize on the window that you have with this decor? I think, I mean, you have to try to do the almost impossible rebuild on the fly before they get lost. Because no one, especially with the cap situation, with with the COVIDiness of the league right now, no one is taking on, no one's taking on Mark Edward Vlasic's five more years at seven million. Brent Burns with four more at eight, and Eric Carlson at eleven and a half. Those are like very difficult deals to find a taker for. So I feel like you you've got to keep them. And now you've got to start supplementing some of those extra pieces. Because it, I mean, what this feels like is this feels like the Blackhawks of a couple years ago. Right? You had Brent Seabrook, the now yeah. retired Brent Seabrook, yeah. fulfilling the Mark Edward Vlasic role. You've got Duncan Keith jointly filling, I mean, a, a role of the ages. The Academy Award nominations, him playing the role of both Brent Burns and Eric Carlson was quite impressive. And then, but like they don't have that talent up front. Like they don't have a Patrick Kane or Jonathan Taves on this team. You know who they should go get is Taylor Hall. Just add more pieces. I mean, if they if they manage yeah. to if they manage to bankruptcy court Evander Kane out of town. That'd be a great piece to add to this. Come on. If Taylor Hall, Taylor Hall is making what? 8 million right now. Yeah. You think he's going to demand com, command, demand a raise next year. But this team, this look, they have third. If the cap stays flat, which it likely will. Yeah. They have 14 million in cap space next year. Yeah. With five forwards signed. You're going to spend eight of that 14 million on one player? Yeah. Maybe less. <laughs> <laughs> See what you can talk him down to. What are you going to do? Like go get a bunch of $3 million guys? Yes. That's what they're doing. I mean, I guess that's what they're doing right now, and it's not working. It's not working. They need they need more scoring power up top. Yeah. Don't you think? Oh, but I they need a goaltender is what they need. They, they need a goaltender. That you are right. Like are, are they just is their attempt to just outscore Martin Jones? Wow, well, they've been trying to do that for two years. And it doesn't work. They can't do it. So <laughs> He is the inevitable. I think we ha- you have to find a way to make to make the goaltending situation fixed. And if I'm spending eight million dollars somewhere, I'd rather spend five million on a goaltender and three million on a forward than eight million on one player. But there's not much of a free agent market for goal- goalies this year, is there? They missed that boat. Is that I? I was trying to recall in my memories who is the free agent goalies of this year. I don't know if there are any big names. I I just think that if they're going to go get a goalie, they're going to have to trade for it. He so here are and I. There's a lot of players here who likely will stay, but Tukarask does not have a contract for next year. No, 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 what? They're gonna go get two thirty-five-year-old Tuka Rask. Why not? It's a it's a safe short-term deal. How long are you gonna sign thirty-five-year-old Tuka Rask for? At two what? Years? At Three what years? cost? If you if you five million. If it was seven million for one year, would San Jose do it? No. Should they do? How it? How are they gonna fit him and Taylor Hall under that? <laughs> I like that. I mean, I think if you're if you're going out and, and trying to find some extra pieces, you could get either of the Carolina goaltenders. Bring them in. There there are some 
random goalies that aren't named Devin Dubnik and Martin Jones that you can bring in? Hold, hold up. You think James Reimer or Peter Mrazek are going to help turn the ship around? I'm not saying they're turning the ship around, but Carolina's managing to win with them. Carolina's a better team overall, like across the board. I get that. What about, man, I can't believe both the Carolina's goalies are free agents this year. Um, Frederick Anderson. I mean, is he better than Martin Jones? <laughs> sure doesn't seem like it. Some, <laughs> I feel some like days. The, the fact that the Leafs are probably going to let him walk <laughs> means no other team should get him. Like you should not go after him if the Maple Leafs can't win with him. If the if the Maple Leafs plan is, you know what, we're just roll out Jack Campbell and Michael Hutchinson. Ooh, the Leafs are a team that can outscore their goaltending. The San Jose Sharks are not. <laughs> and they still can on some nights. Yeah. All right. But so, those are the big those are the big fish if they're gonna go get one of them. Yeah. And I I think Freddie Anderson would be an upgrade. I know he would be. As much as as much as I joke, that would be one. And he's young enough that you can still get some years out of him. Yeah. Um, knowing kind of what he is, I don't think he would command. I mean, depending on term, five mil could certainly be in the ballpark. Yeah. Yeah, I would think so. You think Tuca's going to leave Boston? I mean, he hasn't had a great time with Boston and the media and et cetera this year. I would not be surprised if he left Boston. Hmm, that's interesting. That'd be a big name. Yeah. And he's, I mean, he, I have the game on, I have Boston Pittsburgh on right now and he has given up some granted. It was from this, this young, have you, if, if Genny Malkin, Malkin mm, heard of him I, before? I don't know. Is he from Finland? Uh, I don't know. I'll look him up. Um, <laughs> anyways, he, he scored a goal against him and it's just like, he wasn't getting across the way that he should. I was like, that doesn't look like the Tuka Rask we know and love. But if, if, if look, if he's not one of the NHL's top 100 players, I probably don't know him. Well, I don't think he is. So, <laughs> anyways, so San Jose, do you think they get a goalie this year or do they just run Martin Jones out there again next year and hope? Well, I think fixed? Martin, I think Martin Jones will be back. The question well, yeah. is, who are they gonna who are they gonna challenge him with? No, I don't. I don't. There's no chance unless he gets bought out that Martin Jones is not on this team. Yeah, so he'll be back. It's just a matter of like, who are they gonna replace Devin Dubnik with, and is that person going to be able to steal the starter spot from Martin Jones? And the answer is probably, maybe. I mean, whoever they sign has a really good chance of taking the starter's position on this team. Yes. I mean, Devin Dubnik should be getting, and, and, you know, it's been slightly more Martin Jones than Dubnik this year, but Dubnik's played better. Martin Jones has been abysmal. Yeah. Arguably worst goalie in the league. That's getting time. Well, I don't know if we fixed the Sharks. I guess I we like, did go get a goalie. <laughs> go get a, but I feel Done. like this is I feel like this is the conversation happening also in the San Jose Sharks front office. Is they sit down, they're like, all right, what's our plan moving forward? Trade deadline, what are we doing? We need a goalie. Yeah. And then they leave. They said, Did we accomplish anything in this meeting? I don't think we did. No. All right. See you tomorrow. Probably just so many meetings end without any actionable next steps. It's one of my biggest pet peeves, Carl. Well, sorry, sorry to bring real life into this show. <laughs> I'm sorry. All right. Well, sorry, San Jose, that you're eliminated. Sorry, we don't have really anything to fix your team for you. But hey, uh, all the best. We yep. should we talk about the other end of the standings? We actually, uh, this could, I mean, maybe, maybe I besmirched Tuka Rask too shortly, or maybe he just left this game, but Tuka Rask is not the goalie. I am looking at my television and he is currently listed on an injury report as undisclosed. Ooh. 
And now there's a different, something happened with the goaltending in this game. I do not know what it is because they are now showing someone else on the bench. I got to figure, I thought Tuka was in. He's not. It was Halak. No wonder that didn't look like the Tuka Rask we know and love. That's Yaroslav Halak <laughs> in this. Less surprising that some unknown kid, Evgeny Malkin, was able to score on him. Yeah, that's, that is definitely something that the 102nd best player in NHL history could do. <laughs> All right. Uh, we had the Knicks Lidstrom last week was the Washington Capitals, and they went undefeated smashing the over in every single game this week. They are currently beating up on the Buffalo Sabres. Last I checked, that game was 4 nothing. Yeah, I just turned that one off. I was watching that one. Well, that was a mistake. Uh, it is still 4 nothing, and likely will continue. But, I mean, a solid week all around for the Capitals. This team scores a lot of goals. Yeah, I mean... But 5-4 against the Flyers, 5-3 against the Flyers, 5-4 in overtime over the Devils, and now 4 nothing. And kind of the guys you expect to be doing it are doing it. And looking great doing it as well. So far they have three 10-goal scorers this season. Let's, uh, let's play the game. Alexander Ovechkin. Yes. Genny Kuznetsov. No. Jacob Brana. Yes. Tom Wilson. <laughs> no. I I mean it was great to not have Tom Wilson in the games this week. Nicholas Backstrom. Nick Backstrom. I he's not much of a goal scorer. I'm a little surprised. You want to know how many goals Evgeny Kuznetsov has? Two. Two goals for old Kuznetsov. Two goals in 17 games. Backstrom is like is is leading the team far and away with 30 points. The next closest is John Carlson with 24. It's gonna John Carlson was my next pick as goal scorers. Six goals. Yeah. Um so the pieces that they're expecting to carry them are, I mean, they've added like Connor Sheary had a couple goals this week. Uh so some of those like you know, depth players that kind of are expected to round out this team are doing it. And their kind of biggest question mark heading into the season has actually been pretty stable for them. And that's their goaltending. Yeah. I mean, well, it became very unstable when they were like, we're going to get Henrik Lundqvist in here. And then he had his, you know, unexpected heart issues and I mean, retired, took a leave whatever it is, but you're right. They've been, they've been holding it together in that. With kind of unproven young goaltenders that even at the time they're like, ah, we don't know how well this is going to go. And if it doesn't go well, we'll make a move early in the season. Well, cause it was expected that Ilya Samsonov would be the guy this year with, you know, him and Lungfist. And that's yeah. not even the case. No, it is not. Vitek Vanacek has gotten nailed the it. bulk of the starts. Did I nail it? You, yeah, you nailed it. Nice. Do you know where and, he's from? Uh, that sounds Czech. Uh, let me find out. You're right. Czech hey. Republic. Uh, yeah, I mean, and, and good on him. I'm not sure if I would fully invest in Vitek Vanacek, but... I would run them while I can. They're getting what they need out of them right now. Yeah. I mean, what 900 save percentage is really what this team needs. Right. And they've been getting that from Samsonov. They've been getting that from him. I think they'll be fine moving forward. I totally agree. I think that question mark is no longer a question mark. I think they have established themselves as, you know, a playoff team. One of the best teams, at least in the, Eastern conference. Um, and yeah, I'm fairly confident with the call that we made last week about putting them in the playoffs. Well, there we go. What team do you have similar confidence about for this week? I want to stick within the division. I want to pick the team I wanted to pick last week. Do it. Let's go. The New York Islanders. 
Do they play the Boston Bruins this week? They don't. They don't. Well, what, what's the date next Monday, the 22nd? 22nd. So they play the Washington Capitals, and then we get three games against the Philadelphia Flyers. There we go. They play a jam-packed schedule Thursday, Saturday, Monday, all in. Oh, no, the last one's in uh, two in New York, one in Philadelphia. I'm in for it. Let's go. New York Islanders. Let's do it. Let's watch some Matt Barzal, some Oliver, Oliver Wallstrom. It's, it's going to be a good week for it. Now, here is you said earlier that you were concerned about a team having to be pulled out of the Knicks Lidstrom playoff lock. We have now locked in three teams in this division, the Islanders, the Capitals, and the Flyers, meaning one of Penguins or Bruins, are not going to be in the playoffs. Yeah. We'll see how this week goes for the Flyers. <laughs> I mean, going, if they lose five games in the Nick's Lidstrom high low sticking contest in back to back weeks, I feel like that eliminates them. Yeah, pretty close, right? This like this division setup, the schedule is so crazy with how it affects the standings. They could change on a dime. Absolutely. I mean, you can play a bottom team. Who is it? I believe the Penguins had not played the Sabres yet this year until last week. They hadn't played until this week. Yeah. Wow. So, so they're going to play a lot from here on out. Yeah. So, I mean, those are some of those things, right? You play, you play the top teams a bunch. You're going to look worse. You play the bottom teams a bunch. You look great. Same thing last week. Do you remember how concerned I was about the avalanche and their injury situations? Yes, I do. I feel way better today. You seem much, you're you're much more upbeat today. Yeah. I mean, it's, (laughs) there's that. There's, it's four days until spring break. Oh, nice. So that'll be good. Nice. Yours didn't get pushed back. No. Um, no, we, we're just ro- rolling it out. And it's a two-week spring break, so it's going to be twice as nice. Oh, wow. Nice. Ours in Ontario got pushed till April. That's a terrible idea. I, w- I have said repeatedly, for those that are, I mean, students and others alike, the push from to Christmas to spring break is the worst stretch of the year, hands down. And making that even longer, that's not fair. It's a rough go. Nonetheless, yeah. the Avalanche, like they beat up on some teams they should beat up on this week. And that felt nice. Now they're looking good sitting behind the Minnesota Wild in the standings. Oh, we'll fix it. It's fine. You will fix it very quickly. Or not. I mean, or we'll play them in the first round and get eliminated and they'll be sad. Those are our options. Nonetheless, you can play this week for every New York Islanders game when they play the Flyers twice. Who's the other team they're playing? Do you remember? Uh, the Devils, I think. There we go. No, the Capitals. Capitals, Flyers games, every New York Islanders game this week. We're going to tune in and watch it and be back next week to review those with you. But you can head over to our Twitter at fourth line podcast and click, click the over or under for each of those games. I know we've got a few of them that are really, really trying to get the push on a 6.0 line. And we have not hit it once this year. Uh, so it's, we've never gotten the six goals for a 6.0 line. Let's see if this is the week for Brody and Scott. Uh, head on over there and play that. Uh, hopefully next week we'll be able to, I know we keep saying we've got a prize. We just keep like delaying and delaying and delaying. Um, hopefully next week we can unveil our new uh, prizes that we've got. And until then, thank you for listening. Subscribe at on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, wherever you listen, head on over to the Full Press radio app or Full Press uh, Sports to find out more from the fantastic writers, other podcasts that are over there. Thanks very much uh, for tuning in. You can find us at the fourth line podcast.com. And until next week, time for us to wrap up another fourth line show. I know what you're thinking. You don't want us to go. All the sense fans are veritable sickos. 
and all the fans of my songs will now be known as Nikos. 